Before we get started, this is one of the tougher models to mod. Please watch this video all the way through before you even attempt to do it. I would say even before you buy the mod kit. And yes, I just put out a video called Why SP Suck. You should probably watch that before you get started too. Get it? Got it? Good. Roll the intro. Thank you to Extreme 8 for sending this out. They've actually sent out a couple other ones. They also sent out the Game Boy Advance shell for that in-depth tutorial. After that experience, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently this time. I also have a generic IPS cut shell that I'm gonna do alongside of this. This guy is still gonna be the main focus, but I do wanna show off the key differences between these two. It comes with the shell. Key thing number one, this guy has all the pieces included, but you're gonna have to put in everything yourself. This guy has all of the buttons and membranes and has this thing here to keep all the buttons from falling out. It also has the LED diffuser thing. This doesn't have any of that installed. This one also comes with the uh, LNR and the power switch and the uh, shielding here. This comes with all of that again, it's just not installed so we'll have to do that ourselves. Comes with everything including screws and the screwdrivers that you will need to complete this mod. If you are a regular modder you will have a million of these because a lot of companies will include these screwdrivers or some sort of variation of them. They're not the most comfortable but if you don't have a tri-wing screwdriver or a small enough Phillips head then these are really handy. I'm not going to use them though. My normal gag is to yeet them across the room, but the screws are in the same bag. Warrant, okay. Six month warranty. Does not cover deterioration or failure due to normal use, wear, and aging. According to the last time, that does cover broken screw posts. That and it arriving broken is really the only thing it seems to cover. So there's that. Let's get started. I buy my mod kits from Retro Game Repair Shop and I highly recommend you buy from them as well. You can find a link to them in the description as well as a link to Extreme Rate. You can use code Jake either places to get 10% off of your purchase. And thank you to those guys for sending this stuff out. Really appreciate it. You will only need to solder if you want to adjust the brightness, at least with the mod we're doing today, it's the GBA SP IPS V2. I just use the generic ones because to me they're the easiest to work on. I'll have a direct link to that mod kit down below. But we also have the funny playing one here because that's what Retro Game Repair Shop had in stock at the time. But these ones that don't have the cutouts, and what I mean by that, these guys that have the screw hole cutouts, these guys are way brighter than these. I don't know why. To me, it's a good thing. This has more range than this does. This just doesn't get as bright. We're going to use this on the white one and the black one on the pink one. But before we get too far into any of the mod kit stuff, we have to tear it down. The millionth company I'm going to mention is iFixit. I have no affiliation with them yet, so I'll keep this brief. Their toolkits are awesome. They have all the bits you need, so... I use them. They're a lot nicer than the included screwdrivers. If you're getting into modding and you want to do this a lot more, then uh, I highly recommend getting the iFixit Protect Toolkit. I'll also link that down below, but I don't have a code for that one because, again, I'm not affiliated with them. But the first screw is this battery cover right here. It's one little Phillips head. I think it's technically JIS, and you should use the JIS screw bit. If all you have is Phillips, be very careful. And this little tab right here, you can stick your fingernail under and bring out the battery. Since this is an actual battery instead of AA batteries, on your old console, take a look at the battery. And if it's puffy at all, throw it out. Safely throw it out. But if there is any puff to this battery, toss it and get a new one. I will link one down below. They're just generic batteries, so they could be good, they could be bad. I've had good luck with these ones, but they're probably lying about how long the battery lasts. Keep that in mind. But this one has no signs of damage whatsoever. It honestly looks like brand new. So we're gonna reuse this. Now, flip over to your tri-wing. There are two small tri-wings right here. Same size bit, but they're a little shorter. They're also silver. You can go ahead and take those out. And then there are four more right here. Now we can grab it and pull up and it should come off very easily. And we can just put all of this off to the side. 
Sometimes the threads for the battery door will come with it. If you need to save it for whatever reason, I just set it off to the side. And same thing with the power switch cover. May come with the bottom half, it may stay with the top half. Then swap back over to your Phillips. But there are one, two, three Phillips screws right here that we need to take out. And we are going to carefully lift this open like a notepad. We're going to lift it up a little bit and we're going to fold it back. And from here, we're going to push this latch down and we're going to do the same thing to the other side. And it should just come out like that. We can set this board off to the side. Do not clean it. I know I've said in the past to spray the stuff with IPA. Do not. Not on the SP. I'll get to that in a moment. Or you can go and watch my YSP suck video. But we will need this speaker out of here. The little cloth might come with it or it might stay in here. I would grab the cloth if I were you. Then this last screw here is sneaky. Well, it's not the last screw, but the last screw in this half of it, it's right underneath the ribbon cable. Fold that down. This screw is a lot longer, so don't put it into the wrong screw hole if you reuse your screws. Now, here's where your buttons will probably fall out. That's okay. We're not going to reuse them. With that last screw gone, we can actually peel this up. Here's one of my frustrations with the SP is you're gonna need these hinges. You can buy aftermarket and OEM hinges, but that does add to the cost of your modding, so it's up to you. If you don't need hinges, you can skip ahead. If not, let's take care of these hinges. Open this up, and I would grab some sort of tweezer, something small that you can get underneath these rubber pads. They are stuck on, so it, it might be a little tough to get them out. It's really not that bad, especially if you're not trying to preserve these. These are in not the greatest condition already, so I'm just gonna jab at them. Stick them in and pull up. Stick them in and pull. There we go, just rip them out. There's screws underneath all five of these. And now we can swap back to our tri-wing again and unscrew these five screws now it should already be starting to come off but we can flip this back down and then the back just comes right off you can lift up the screen it should come right out and here is the next tough part this is the hinge i'm going to take my tweezers you can also take the screwdriver you're going to want to be careful here we're going to take this and just push these little tabs in Don't be too forceful with it because these tabs will break. And you can push in through the middle and it'll pop. Do not force it any more from here. Hold up. It should only pop out this much. Now let's do the same thing to the other side. Okay. And again, push it through. Again, it should only come out like this much. If it doesn't push through, just push the tabs in again, again, very lightly. We're just trying to loosen it and push it out. Now we can unfold it and we should be able to just push it out super easily. That one was still a little bit stuck. And again to the other side, just push it out. That one came out easily. And now we've completely disassembled the SP and we actually got lucky and didn't break any of the tabs. Set these off to the side. I like to separate them, the left and the right, how they came out. I don't think it really matters, but they are two different colors, so it makes me think it does matter. But also the aftermarket ones are all one color, so I assume they're just all the same. I don't know. From here, I like to start with the top half, the screen. So we're going to lay this down like that. We're going to go ahead and peel this peel. Normally with mods, you wouldn't peel the screen lens till the end, but you can't really peel it once you've put it in so plus we don't have to actually adhere the screen lens to the screen so from here we'll do the harder part we're gonna take the cable here we're gonna set it down like that line it up and we're just gonna fold this over and into its connector you should hear a little click it's honestly pretty tough to line it up because it is very very small so take your time don't rush it just make sure it clicks in if you don't hear that click I recommend reseating it if you've been watching my streams where I sell these, that has happened a lot recently where I have to take it apart and just reseat this connection here. I would just make sure it clicks before you move on. Uh, some of these kits come with the insulation film that you put on the back of the screen. 
Uh, for some reason, the funny playing ones, these straight cut ones, don't. I'm paranoid of things shorting, and I don't like that this board just touches the back of the screen. So I'm going to take the film that was protecting the glass, and I'm just going to slide it in and protect my baby. It's a little bigger. You can cut it to size, or you can just put it in as normal. You can also use capped on tape, but I know not everybody buys that, so I'm just using the materials that I've got in front of me. I would just fold it or just make sure that it isn't in the way of these screw holes. Now we can take this piece of foam and just put it over the top. This will keep the screen from bouncing around. You don't really want that. <laughs> Normally I would take like a long time to make sure it's lined up and looking nice, but this is an opaque shell, which I rarely do with SPs for some reason. Just make sure when you put this down, that you aren't pinching the little board here. So make sure that's as in as possible. Some of these foams will even just slide right into the back and they'll stay in there. So if you're having trouble lining it up, might try that. And before we put this back on, we're gonna wanna loop to loop this little ribbon cable. Should look something like this. You're gonna really need all hands on deck for this one. Put that over. Again, make sure you're not pinching this here. And you should be able to just push all of that down. Since they don't separate the screws for you into little different bags, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to which screws I'm using here. You're gonna to wanna to grab these shorter tri-wing screwdrivers that are silver and screw five of them into these five holes here. Once you got all five of those in, we're gonna do the soldering. Normally, I don't do it this way, but I think this is the easiest way to do the soldering. Again, if you do not feel comfortable doing it, you do not have to do it. You're just not gonna be able to adjust the brightness. You're gonna be stuck at half brightness, I believe, maybe 60, 70%. But all we're gonna do is add a little bit of solder to this point right here. Should turn on your soldering iron before you do that. Just push the solder into it and it should look something like that. Then you can grab the little black or red wire that came with the, uh, the kit, the mod kit, not the shell. I recommend grabbing it close to the end you're gonna solder and holding it with tweezers like that. And it's that simple. Now we can take this piece of the shell and we're gonna put the ribbon cable and the wire through this slot right here. and then line the console up how it normally does. Then it should stick out like this. Now let's go ahead and put the hinges in. We can take off these disgusting things and then slide on the new ones. They only go on one way, so don't force it. These little slots here on the plastic cap, you want those to face the same direction as the charge port and link port, and then just push that in. Not all the way, some of the way. And do the same thing on the other side. And then what you're gonna wanna do, hold it just like I am right now, put a slight bit of pressure on both the hinges, and we're gonna fold it out nice and slowly. And when it's in the right position, they should slide right in. Just a little bit of pressure, not too much. If you do too much, you could crack the plastic where the hinge goes in, and that would be bad, because then you're gonna have to go back in and tear it down all the way just to remove those hinges and put in a new plastic piece whenever your order comes in. And now you can just close that back up. Congrats, you have the hinges in. Now we can take this little piece, put it in like so, and we can look for the longer Phillips screw and just screw that really long screw in there. I would put pressure with two fingers on this side as you're screwing it in. And don't over tighten that screw. That point tends to crack a lot in my experience, so leave it tight enough. <laughs> now is where I open up all the rest of the bags for this. We're gonna put all of the buttons and stuff in. Again, other companies have a lot of the stuff pre-installed, so if you're using a different shell, then you can go ahead and skip ahead. These stickers are very sticky, and they cover up the Ziploc part of the bag, so this may happen to you. It sticks to the freaking bag. So I recommend cutting the label or the bag to get in here. Not all the volume slider covers come off. So if it doesn't come off super easily, don't keep yanking on it. You're just gonna break it. 
but we can do that to this one. So this one's gonna get a white one. Okay, let's put some buttons in. A is on the outside, B is on the inside. I didn't realize that they included one of the cloth things for the speaker, cool. Again, don't forget this little guy. This does not come pre-installed. We'll set that off to the side and we'll finish off this half. You can put this little guy down like this and we'll get those other two really long Phillips screws. Then we can get the rod and spring for your L and R buttons. You're gonna want to line the spring up like this. So the bent part lines up with the hole in the button and then the spring can wrap around the hole in this part. I'd hold it like that so you can stick the rod in. Then you can stick it in that hole and make sure that the end of the spring goes in that little notch there. And do the same thing for the other one. There are two different springs, one for L and one for R. Mine has duplicates. I don't know if that's a regular thing or not. Just so you know, if it doesn't line up with one, try a different one. <laughs> and if you're having trouble getting the spring into that little notch, then you can use tweezers to guide it in. I like to use my fingernails. And then don't forget this little guy too. This is the screw threads for your battery door. Make sure it's nice and flat like that. Then we can set this back off to the side and do our last bit of soldering. If you don't want to solder, you don't have to. So you can move on along. What we're gonna do first actually is put some solder on the board, which this board already has some solder on it. Solder to, I can never tell if that's a Q or an O. Q1, 2B, we'll call it that. Q12B, quarterback 12, Tom Brady, right there. Put some solder on that boy, and that's what we're gonna solder to. I have no idea why there's solder on the one below, so just ignore that. So we're gonna take the wire with our tweezers. We're gonna hold it over that point on the board and solder it right down. Wow, that's actually a lot easier than the method I normally do. <laughs> Why do I do it that way? This point will be tough though. We have to take this cable, do not overstretch it. I like to hold it with my thumb like this, and slide it in, then we can lock it in with our thumbnails. I would make sure that the wire is not hanging over any of these switches. So I typically route it around like that. You're also gonna wanna make sure it's not over any screw holes because your screw will go right through the wire. And then just close it up, you know, closing the notepad like we opened it earlier. Then we can screw it down. Find three of the shorter gold Phillips screws, these guys right here, and screw those in these three right here. Don't freak out. There are extra screws, don't worry about it. I'll point out all the screws we need. Then I recommend putting in your power switch like this. Have the bent part on top and also make sure it's lined up with the actual power switch. Put on your uh, volume switch cover if you haven't already and we can take the bottom half and carefully put it on the top. Everything should be lined up now. We can switch back over to our tri-wing. I'm actually gonna take the tweezers to lift up the battery door. Find two more of these shorter tri-wing screws that are silver. Screw one of those in the battery hole. And then the other one in the cartridge slot. Again, the shorter silver tri-wing ones. Then we can get the longer gold tri-wing ones, like so, and drop them in these four right here. Now we can put our battery back in. Again, if it's bulging, toss it, get a new one, link down below. We can put our battery door in, and then there should be two of these included. You only need one. It's a smaller Phillips screw that only has threads going down half of it. Swap over to the Phillips and screw that down. Then we can flip it over. Now we can make sure everything works. Boom. Now we can put the finishing touches on. These also seem to have plenty of extras, but the two larger bumps, these will stick right on. The two bigger ones go on the corners, so when you close it, it doesn't just 
whack into itself. This strip is actually got something in it. You can just peel these little guys out and stick them in the other screw holes. Now we can close that up, flip it over, and we can put the back sticker on. I recommend going from the left side, lining everything up, and smooth it out just like that. That should be the easiest way to line up that sticker. That is the hardest sticker to put on for I don't know why. And our work is done. I'm going to quickly make sure that all the buttons are working. A, B, right, left, down, up, R, L, start and select. Everything works beautifully. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. I don't like the SP, I'm sorry. There's a reason why I made the video last week, but man, this looks good. If you want this, this will be up for sale, along with the pink one. They're both going to be $200, and the listings will be down below. First come, first serve. If you've been watching my tutorials, then you know that this was coming, so. <laughs> my flash cart is not included, though. Even though the extreme rate one is a little bit more work, honestly, this one was worth it. This is just so freaking pretty. Man, this looks awesome. Check out RetroRemaster.com if you want one of these. Hopefully you were able to get it if you wanted it. Otherwise, just follow me on Twitter and Instagram. That's where I'll announce my next SP stream. Subscribing is probably the best way to find that out because I always put the thumbnail up for the stream like 12 hours before. Now you know how to build one yourself, so you can stop bugging me. But I, I, I will do more in the future, just not as often. But my members and patrons got to see this early, so they got a little head start knowing that this was going to be up for sale and there was going to be a link in the description. So they also get an extra video every month that is exclusive to them. So if you want to support me with your wallets like these lovely folks here, you can hit that join button down below. And, you know, listen to Brittany. So like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later, guys. You clearly stuck around to the end, so maybe you need more help. I'll put some videos on screen for you to choose from that will give you some more insight on how to do this. Good luck.